Okay, I'm going to walk you through Serial Hacker 1, login as admin on this website. We don't get any hints, we don't get really much of anything going on here. Um, so, you know, we could try saying admin password, and that, that doesn't work. So, we can view the page source. Again, there's really not a lot here to look at. We do see this index PHP file equals login. So you might sort of try to guess um, some other things that you could put in there. I, I guessed putting an admin and that did get me to this page, which is probably uh, the page that I wanted. And, but you know, I didn't, I didn't have anything going on there. So at this point, um, I decided maybe I needed to try to brute force some passwords. So I grabbed this uh, user password combination list from uh, GitHub that I found, and I went to uh, Kali Linux box, and I fired up a copy of Hydra. So Hydra is a tool that you can use to attack lots of different things and brute force usernames and passwords. So I gave it a copy of that file. I shortened the file a bunch because it was really slow. And I said, okay, I'm gonna attack uh, this website, port 37889, then the HTTP post for index.php, file is login. So this was the uh, website, the URL. And you separate that with a colon and you say user. So uh, if we look back at the source code for the website, you can see that the two fields that I need are user and pass. And those are gonna get posted. So that's what I'm putting in here. So I said user is, and then this caret, all caps, user, that special Hydra syntax, that means it's going to fill that in. Pass equals, and then the uh, carrots with the all caps pass means Hydra will fill that in. So it'll fill in the users and the passwords uh, from the same file. You could create your a file with usernames and a file with passwords for it to try. Then you have another colon and you specify what does it look like when you get it wrong. And so when you get it wrong, right, so if I say like admin, admin, you'll see this invalid login. So that string invalid lets it know that it got it wrong. All right, so then I, you know, run Hydra. It took quite a while. It was doing, um, you know, really only 36 tries, 55 tries a minute. So it took a long time. But eventually it cranks out that we can log into this with the login guest and the password guest. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll go guest, guest, and that pops us over here to the regular user page. You'll note if I go to the admin page, it still says I'm not an admin. So how does it know who I am at this point, right? So the way it knows who I am is with a cookie. So I can look at this cookie. This cookie looks like it is base64 encoded. So I'm gonna stop, uh, slap that over here, I'll decode it. And you'll see that we have this kind of text here. So we have the username, uh, guest, password is guest. And so uh, the first thing I tried was I said, okay, I'm going to just change my username to be admin. I'll leave the password alone. I'll re-encode the cookie. That did not work. So the next thing was to say, okay, uh, it's probably going to do a, a query. Um, it didn't let me do, right, so if I didn't let me do tick space or tick one tick equals tick one, the SQL injection, it's using a prepared query here. But I'm hoping that when it evaluates this cookie, since it thinks it created the cookie, that it won't bother to use a prepared query there. So I put in, I had to change this to 11 because now it's 11 characters long. Right over here it was uh, five characters long, but now my password is 11 characters long, tick space or tick one, tick equals tick one. All right, so I'm gonna do SQL injection on the password. I get this uh, as the cookie. I come back here and I'm gonna go to the admin page. I'll go ahead, I'll edit my cookie. Oh, I'm not, yeah, I have to go back and log in first. Guest, 
guest. All right, so I'm gonna come over to the admin page. I'm not an admin, but I'm gonna change my cookie now and put in that thing that I base64 encoded that had the SQL injection. I save that, I refresh the page, and then it does in fact give me the flag. So the key thing going on here was that I found a SQL injection, but the SQL injection was in the cookie and not on the web form itself. And then we can put that over here and we get the points.